Hello, everybody. Oh, welcome back. It is yet another day here in paradise. And as I quickly need to switch over the camera, as uh, hello, what's going on? I'm dude blowing it up today because it's a it's a rainy day in Stockholm and I couldn't find an umbrella, so I had to wear a hat instead. Hello, Wiz. How are you doing oh, today? Hello. I'm um, quite well. Apparently, we're doing something cool today. Apparently, yeah. we're looking at this little game we've launched like about a year ago now. Yeah, it's called I, EU, EU something. Europa Franz Versalis, I think. I think oh, Europa Carlingi Versalis, uh, maybe? So, something, something like something that. Something on Habsburgian... Crusader Europeans 2. Svea Carling. That's anyway, we have a, we're actually here today to talk about a new expansion for EU4 that is coming up. And we're not even going to touch on every single aspect yeah. of that expansion today. However, we are going to tease a few things that actually we haven't talked about uh, thus far. Which is actually kind of cool because I'm quickly going to go into our game. As uh, we are here in EU4 and there is quite a lot of stuff going on, isn't there? Oh yes. So uh, This is a very, very big expansion. Yeah, emphasis on very, very mm -hmm. big. So when it comes to scale-wise, if I have to say, compared to any of our expansions from uh, our other games, specifically Euro uh, Crusader Kings 2, um, like would you put it like on par with like Old Gods or something along those lines, or uh, would it be more like this is not even Old Gods? Yeah, gods. We're this blowing is everything out of the water. Pretty much, All we right. are blowing everything out of the water. I mean, there's just no real comparison. In terms of both the map expansion mm -hmm. features it's you know like old gods plus rajas of india mm -hmm. let's put it that way old gods plus <laughs> rajas of india i'm putting that out there mm -hmm. well that's actually but well, that's actually <laughs> that's quite a statement to make to be honest however um this particular expansion is so big that we actually don't have enough time to put it all in one stream we actually will have to do another one somewhere in the near future uh, mainly because there's just so much stuff to actually go about and I've been specifically asked not to put everything in mainly because this will be a three hour presentation and we just don't have the time for that sort of thing because this guy needs to go and actually finish the damn thing because he was sick last week working. yeah sometimes sometimes we have the plague week. at the office it's it's okay, like, I mean, we've only lost, what, 10 people? Yeah, you know, what are you gonna do, right? Yeah. So let's go, and, uh, let's go and dive into the game. Let's dive into the Art of War. I quickly need to check here whether or not I'm looking on the right screen, because we are not. I'm quickly gonna go over, and uh, let's dive into the Art of War, because we actually have the game running on two particular screens. Mm. What you see in front of you right now is actually the Art of War, whereas on the screen you saw earlier is the current retail version with all the expansions attached to it. And we're gonna go uh, throughout this particular broadcast, we're gonna go and actually talk about the differences between the current build and the build that we had before. So this is actually, um, yeah. Oh, you got to turn some stuff off there, I see. Yeah, I got some hints. All right, that's always always good to know yeah, because, you know, you know being, uh, <laughs> being the main developer for this game... I know nothing about not it. Not knowing it's anything. Like, uh, th this is the one, you know, with where you, like, play as uh, Nazi Germany, right? Yes, I think so. You know nothing. You know nothing no. with snow. No, absolutely nothing, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Never anyway, let's go and uh, head over towards what we actually have, because I've got a fairly expansive list. Um, we are actually yeah, the art of war. The art of war, as it actually implies, um, obviously army. So mm -hmm. let's actually ro rock straight into that right off the bat, and let's talk about army mechanics specifically. Um, let's talk about marches. Let's talk about marches. What can we do with marches? So in in EU4 you have vassals, right? And mm -hmm. everyone knows vassals are nice because you can feed them things and they can fight for you and then you eat them. Hmm. Marches are kind of the vassals that you can't eat but they're very good at being fed. Okay. The idea is that a march is a permanent vassal. You actually have a starting march here so I will show you. And it's Moldavia who start the game as a march on the Poland. The way you create a march is by picking one of your vassals think I will be able to do this while at war. Oh, oh okay, so we are currently, oh, yes, we're currently playing as the big blue blob. The big blue blob, of course. Of course we are. Why wouldn't we be? Mm -hmm. I never play as any other nation. No, it's clearly the best nation on the map, and it should be boosted. It's way on the power, though. It's way it Definitely, it needs far more manpower to actually be competitive within Europe. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. More manpower, more tax. Mm. The ideas are a bit weak. Yeah, I know, I know. Especially when, especially with a revolution, revolutionary version. is. Holy, it's terrible. We need yeah. to do something about that. I anyway, designated marches. Right. So, 
a march is a vassal, like I said, but it's a vassal you can't annex. It's a permanent vassal. It's something like, right, so I have this region of the map where I don't want to expand. I want sort of a military border mm -hmm. because there's some annoying person who keeps attacking me there. Like so a buffer you, zone. Yeah, like a buffer zone. So you put gra grab a vassal along that border and you designate them a march. And this makes them kind of badass. It gives them bonuses to manpower, it gives them bonuses to force limits, it uh, gives them fort defense. And the only drawback is that you can no longer annex them. Mm -hmm. the and the, 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 it reduces taxes as well. Yeah, that's true. You don't get any income from uh, any like vassal tax from them. They, they get to spend that for themselves because their priority now is to participate in your wars. Mm -hmm. So you get a vassal which can raise larger armies, will help you more in wars, will be more inclined to do things like fabricate claims, and generally be sort of a junior partner in all of your conquests. Mm -hmm. So basic, how many marches can you have? Uh, it's the same as vassals. Each one takes up a diplomat slot, so okay. plus that. So you can have as many as you can afford, mm -hmm. pretty much. Okay, and let's say you're done with this march. You've pretty much conquered all of the territory around you, and the march is becoming more of a liability. What happens then? Can you still take away the designation yes. of the march? You can revoke the march status. That would cost you a stability point, and it will make them really dislike you for a while. So it, basically, if you revoke the march status, it's going to take some time before you can integrate them. But it's entirely possible mm -hmm. to revoke the March Daughters and return them to being a normal vassal. Mm -hmm. And you'll stick a stab hit, I believe. Yeah, stab hit and an opinion hit. Okay, cool. So um, let's let's put an example here. Can you can you, can you give me a historical example of a march? Uh, sure, I can actually give you this because Moldova, Moldavia. Okay, it starts as a march, and that's historically really a march. Yeah. Moldavia was sort of Poland's military border with the Ottomans mm -hmm. and tended to jump around a bunch between overlords, initially being under Poland and being under the Ottomans and just sort of being used as a buffer state <laughs> that had to, you know, raise troops and send grain back to the capital. I see that you have a, they have a new icon for that as well for the yeah, marches. It's, you know, a vassal, but a slightly more badass vassal. That sounds good. Moldova is a march under Poland. Cool. Yep. All right. So um, let's take a look here. What what do I see next there to Genoa? Is that Theodoro? Uh, yes. That is Theodoro, the big purple blob. The big purple blob. <laughs> That's a new OPM right. in the Crimea Peninsula. Yeah, they actually have a culture which is completely unique to the province they're in, which is the Goths. And that is historical because it's actually sort of a remnant of, you know, the old Gothic kingdoms and all that, which is sort of clung on for a little while longer on the Crimean Peninsula. Just like the uh, the Romans, they migrated towards the east, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, hmm. pretty much, and just sort of ended up here. And hmm. I mean, if you want to do a Gothic revival, you absolutely can. So there you go. It's okay. not the best starting position, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, you can take over Genoa, I guess. It shouldn't be too difficult. Yeah, I think Crimea might have words with you about that. It uh, shouldn't be too, too problematic. So let's go and uh, take a look at some of the other army mechanics that we actually have. We've got such a thing as, actually, before the stream, we actually talked about our favorite ruler of Russia called... Catherine the Great. The Catherine the Great. I thought we were talking about. Oh, Peter. so the Peter the Great. Peter oh, the yeah, Great. he's awesome. So we were talking about Peter the Great and specifically how he all by himself managed to. Uh, yes, by the way, just to get you in on the joke, I'm not actually speaking of Peter the Great, I'm speaking of Peter the oh. Third, who, by virtue of being a Prussian fanboy, managed to lose a rather white piece of war where his wife, which his wife had been engaging, where they were stomping the shit out of Prussia, mm -hmm. and then he takes the throne, and he's just like, yeah, no, I'm too much of a Prussian fanboy, I'm just gonna sign peace. And basically, basically what we were discussing was, if he had the following mechanic added to uh, his uh, rule set, then he would have been, e he could have easily managed to uh, conquer the Prussians, or at least his allies would have been, yeah, because we're talking here about the occupation. occupation. Mm. So what does is, what is transfer of occupation actually do? Because right now, we are in the Hundred Year War, we're about to ruin the shit out of the English. Pretty much. And so what are we going to do here? So we're going to go and attack... We're gonna go in that call, mm -hmm. and I am gonna. Say, oh, I cannot actually do that because I don't know the province ID. So we will have to wait. We all have to wait. We will need probably need to crash that, uh, crush that stack in Normandy as well. Yeah, our vessels can probably handle it. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, they're fleeing. Oh, and they go, <laughs> they're going to go back to England. The Hundred Year, the hundred year War is over, everybody. Everybody can go home. We have, uh, we, we have a new Dauphin. It's all fine. All things considered, that was probably the smartest thing they can do. I know that's what I do with the moment I start playing as, uh, you know... The British? Yeah. Ooh, Let's there's... put away that pop-up. Oh, what? What the hell? New build is new. Don't no, worry about I it. No, I don't... What the shit? Huh. Oh. Huh. Oh well, we can talk about this. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about that in a little bit. That's interesting. It's uh, part of the presentation today, so we can just click that away. It's not an issue. Cool. But uh, it's, it's a real important question here. Is Scotland independent in this game right now? <sighs> yes, they actually voted yes. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> that's good. So uh, yeah, that's. Uh... But you know, I think England might have a violent disagreement. Yeah, I think so. I think like, so as well. Uh, King Cameron is really mad. Mm. Absolutely. So uh, we're currently we're currently while we're taking down these siege timers, looking at the uh, s the scope of the game. How long have you guys actually been working on this? Art of War. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, pretty much since Respublica came out, so it's a while. I mean, we had vacations, of course, but uh, yeah, even some time. Can you give me like a scale, like a month, two, three, four, mm, six? Let's see. Um, let's put one, two. Yeah, like four months. Good. And uh, it's, it's, has anything in particular been very difficult so far? Because obviously we're no longer running the uh, European Universalis multiplayer sessions at the no. moment. So we won't be able to... Uh, people are seeing less of the expansions than they were doing before. Mm. I know the actual opposite is happening with CK2 and their team is really frustrated with that. But yeah. the less we talk about that, the less. Um, has, this ha has the change in not, not showing a lot of these builds off to... Uh, the public really impacted your development cycle. I wouldn't say too much. I mean, it's always fun to be able to show things off, but, you know, it's it's made it easier to develop the map, let's mm. put it that way. Because, I mean, there's been some pro there's been some problems along the way getting into work with saves are fine now, mm -hmm. and will work fine mm -hmm. with release, but, you know, not having to worry about that has obviously exactly. made it a little bit easier, uh but... It's also sort of like, you know, it's fun to show this stuff off. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of the things that we were actually also talking about. Um, when it became to the multiplayer, at one point after Respublica was out of the door, uh, we were already well underway with Art of War, but we couldn't show you because it would have mm -hmm. completely and utterly yeah. broken our multiplayer oh, game. Yes. So uh, before you already know... Uh, before we're actually going to go ahead, this expansion will most certainly break your current save games. Maybe. Most likely? I'd say maybe. Maybe. We've actually gotten it working. It probably won't work super well because the game has to like fill in who owns what, mm -hmm. but the saves should load. It should load. No guarantee on that. Of course. Of but course. We tr we'll, we'll try to make it work mm -hmm. pretty much. If not, no we can roll, you can always roll back through the Steam backup system. Yeah. yeah. That's always good. As we're currently waiting for the ticket, you can, why are you just, just go to Plaid? Just go to Plaid. Plaid. Yeah, go to plus five. There we Fair go. Enough. Siege will be. Oh, there's another. Yeah. Another thing that we'll talk about in a yeah, little bit. Maybe. What? You broke. You broke the game. Okay, we've got the siege. Siege is done. There we go. Put it back to three. And there we go. So speed three. Excellent. Right. So let's talk about transfer occupation. So I control core, but you know. Being French, I am, of course, generous of spirit. Of course. So I'm thinking... Even though you're hilariously underpowered. Yeah, I mean, you have to kind of learn to be generous and humble when mm. you're dealing with such a bad country. Of course, of course. So I would like to give this to someone else. Mm -hmm. I would, in fact, like... I'm thinking I would like Provence to have this. Because I like them so much. Yes, of And course. I'm so generous. Therefore, as I just showed you... I just click on this and transfer it to them. And so that's just a very useful uh, thing. Can you also request occupation? No. Okay. You can only transfer, but the AI will give things to you if you are war leader and they don't want it for themselves and ah. think you have a better claim on it. So it makes more, basically, if you've got cores on it or Yeah, if you've like got that. cores on it they will, and they only have a claim on it, or if, you know, you have a claim on it, and they only kind of want it, mm -hmm. or if they don't want it altogether, they will transfer it over to you if you're a war leader, unless you have transferred it to them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they re if you have transferred it to them, they realize, oh, 
he wants me to keep this, is this and a, not give it back. Is this a sort of, is this a new potential way for Fazl feeding? Yes, ah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that is kind of working as designed. Okay, fair enough. So this is uh, the transfer occupation bit. Yep. Uh, we're not done yet. 